there isn't much time left. Kingdom Hearts 3 is just behind the horizon, and with it only being days away, I figured I would take it upon myself to try and help those who wish to understand the story of Kingdom Hearts to get caught up with just enough time to spare. My name is Lumiform72, and today I am joined with my friends, and with our best attempt, we'll try to explain the entire Kingdom Hearts story for you. Here is the entire Kingdom Hearts timeline from everything we have so far. Let's go. Kingdom Hearts, originally released back in 2002, begins with our main characters Sora, Riku, and Kairi as they are attempting to build a raft in order to leave their small islands, known as Destiny Islands, so they can venture into other worlds. While collecting materials for the raft, Sora heads into an area of the island called the Secret Place and begins to reminisce about Kairi. Unbeknownst to Sora, a hooded figure appears behind him, explaining to Sora his world has been connected and that soon it will be completely eclipsed. He then goes on to tell Sora that he knows nothing and can understand nothing and and then he disappears. Elsewhere, in a world called Disney Castle, we meet our other main characters, Donald Duck and Goofy, and are told through a letter that their king, King Mickey, left behind saying that there is trouble brewing for all of the worlds and that he has to go check up on the situation, and that he needs both Donald and Goofy to find someone with a key, since this person is the key to not only their survival, but the survival of all the worlds. Going back to Destiny Islands, all things for our island trio seems to have been going nicely until later when Destiny Islands is becoming consumed by darkness. Sora, thinking that the events currently going on are just a storm, realizes that the raft is in danger and journeys to the island. Eventually, Sora comes across Riku, and Riku, seemingly unfazed on the events that are going on, reaches out his hand and tells Sora that the door is open. Sora reaches out for Riku, but fails to get him, and darkness consumes them both. Then, a light appears, and Riku seemingly disappears while Sora stumbles in this very same spot, except now he has a weapon called the Keyblade in his hand. Sora then races to the secret place where he encounters Kairi. The door behind Kairi bursts open, pushing Kairi towards Sora, but she phases right through him. He is then pushed out of the cave, and Destiny Islands falls to darkness. A time later, and we see Sora waking up in an unfamiliar place. This place becomes known as Traverse Town, a world where those whose homes were taken by the darkness come to after they fall into darkness. After wandering around Traverse Town, Sora encounters Leon and a battle ensues. Meanwhile, Donald and Goofy are walking around Traverse Town looking for Leon and they encounter Aerith. After Sora and Leon fight, Sora is then brought back to Leon's room where all of the following is explained in detail. First, the Heartless, creatures born from the darkness of people's hearts. It is explained that almost every person has darkness in their hearts and that the Heartless have a great fear of the Keyblade, which is why Sora was constantly attacked by them. The character known as Ansem, which is explained by Leon, Yuffie, and Aerith, seems to have been studying the Heartless and that he had been recording all of his findings in a very detailed report. One drawback is that its pages were scattered among many different worlds, and perhaps that is what King Mickey is trying to track down. As soon as the explanations are finished, however, Sora and company are attacked by the Heartless. Sora, rushing to another part of town, coincidentally meets up with Donald and Goofy, and together the three quickly take care of the threat that was in front of them. After the battle, it is recommended by Leon and his friends that Sora partner up with Donald and Goofy if he wishes to find his friends, and that Donald and Goofy can find King Mickey. After a funny interaction between the three, Sora agrees to travel alongside Donald and Goofy, and they begin their search across many worlds in an attempt to find their missing friends. While they do this, we are shown a scene that contains a bunch of Disney villains and Maleficent, the supposed ringleader of them all, meeting up and talking about what Sora and company are up to, as well as other plans they have in store for our heroes. After traversing through many worlds and locking the keyholes of each world, which by the way prevents Heartless from taking over that world and making it fall to darkness, as well as still continuing to look for Kairi, Riku, and King Mickey, Sora and company go back to Traverse Town and meet up with Riku for the first time since they were separated. Sora offers that Riku come with them, with Donald telling them otherwise. The two bicker, and Riku seemingly disappears, but Sora is nonetheless happy because now he knows that one of his friends are safe. It's then shown minutes later that Maleficent has partnered up with Riku, making him believe that Sora no longer cares for him, and because of that has given Riku more of a reason to trust Maleficent and do things according to what she tells him to do. Later, Sora and company travel to a world called Hollow Bastion. Upon venturing into the castle gates, Sora, Donald, and Goofy encounter Riku and the Beast. A fight breaks out between the two, but Sora ends up stopping them. Riku proceeds to tell Sora that there cannot be two Keyblade Masters and gains control over Sora's Keyblade, claiming to be its true master. He tells him he doesn't have what it takes to save Kairi and throws Sora his old wooden blade. Donald and Goofy proceed to leave Sora because they were reminded that they had a mission to complete. Now that Sora no longer has the Keyblade, there wasn't a reason to stay with him any longer. After helping the Beast, Sora and Beast continue to make their way through the castle, eventually getting inside and meeting Riku, who seems to have changed a bit. Riku tells Sora that the darkness will destroy him and goes to shoot a blast of darkness at him, but suddenly Goofy blocks the attack and tells Riku that they've become best friends during their travels and that nothing would make him betray Sora. 
Donald follows suit and right after Sora ends up gaining control over his Keyblade again and fights Riku and emerges victorious. With the gang back together again, they continue to infiltrate the castle. Meanwhile, in another part of the castle, Maleficent's plan is revealed. Her goal was to collect the seven princesses of heart, beings of pure light. With them, she is able to complete the final keyhole which will lead her into Kingdom Hearts, the heart of all worlds and the source of unmeasurable power and knowledge. At the same time, it is revealed that Kairi is one of the princesses of heart and that Riku and the hooded figure seem to have come together and have been working together for some time now. Riku proceeds to tell Maleficent that without the last princess of heart, the keyhole cannot be completed. Maleficent meets with Sora and battles ensue, with Sora being the victor. Back at the final keyhole, Sora finds a lifeless Kairi and the seemingly possessed Riku tells Sora that Kairi's heart was inside of Sora all along and to complete the keyhole, he needs to release it from Sora. Sora asks who the person controlling Riku really is and he proceeds to call himself Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness. Right after, Sora and the newly possessed Riku fight, but Sora ends up winning. After the battle, Sora tries to steal the last keyhole but fails to do so. He then notices the black keyblade Ansem was using and goes to pick it up. Without a second thought, Sora lunges the keyblade into his chest, releasing the princess's hearts, and that means releasing Kairi's as well. This sacrifice causes Sora to disappear. Kairi wakes up after regaining her heart, and Ansem's true form is revealed. As Ansem walks towards Kairi, Riku appears, holding Ansem back so he can give Kairi, Donald, and Goofy enough time to escape. Afterwards, when Kairi, Donald, and Goofy are almost out of the castle, they come across a lone shadow Heartless. The Heartless isn't hostile and shows it really means no harm. It is then Kairi and the Shadow are swarmed by a bunch of other Heartless, and as Kairi goes to protect the Shadow thinking it to be Sora, Sora returns back to normal as he was indeed the Shadow she protected. Sora and company go back to Traverse Town for a bit of rest. During their downtime, Sora and Kairi have a moment where she proceeds to give him her good luck charm she had made and tells him he better promise to bring it back, in which he does. Sora, Donald, and Goofy then head back to Hollow Bastion to complete the final keyhole. After the keyhole is sealed, Sora and company make their way to their final destination, known as the end of the world. It is here where Sora meets with Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, and they do battle a few times with one another. After Sora, Donald, and Goofy are victorious and Ansem is defeated for good, they had found their way in front of something called the Door to Darkness. They notice a bunch of Heartless are on the other side, so they attempt to close the door for good. When all seems lost, Riku, who seems to have gotten full control over his body back, appears on the other side of the door. Just then, King Mickey is also revealed to be on the other side of the door and tells Sora that it's time to close the door for good and also not to worry as there will always be a door to the light. Donald and Goofy reassures to Sora that he can trust King Mickey and with Riku's final words to Sora being take care of her, they all successfully close the door to darkness. Right after they close the door, however, Kairi is standing a ways behind Sora and he quickly goes to her. Sora says to Kairi to remember what she said to him before, that he's always with her too and that he will come back to her, which she responds, I know you will. Then both of them are separated from each other, Kairi going back to the newly restored Destiny Islands while Sora, Donald, and Goofy are going elsewhere. After the credits roll, Sora, Donald, and Goofy are aimlessly walking around trying to figure out a way to find Riku and King Mickey, and are then surprised when Pluto appears with a letter in his mouth. The three chase after Pluto with newfound confidence that wherever this path may lead them will let them find their missing friends, and this leads into the next title, Kingdom Hearts Three Chain of Memories. The story of Chain of Memories picks up right where Kingdom Hearts 1 left off. After Sora, Donald, and Goofy were separated from their friends, they continued their journey through this mysterious winding path to find them. One night while sleeping under the stars, a mysterious hooded figure leads Sora and the gang to the setting of the game, Castle Oblivion. This hooded figure warns them the deeper they go into the castle, the more they will lose their memories, but they will also find some new memories in the process. The figure created a card from Sora's memory to travel deeper into the castle with. Under the assumption that they can potentially find Riku and the King, they continue deeper through Castle Oblivion, each floor acting as a rehash of the worlds we visited in Kingdom Hearts 1. The first world we visit through Sora's memories is his adventure in Traverse Town. After re-meeting the Final Fantasy characters that have no memory of Sora at all since they are just illusions made up of his memory, he defeats the heartless boss of this world and continues on to the next floor, leaving Traverse Town behind. On the next floor of this castle, Sora meets Axel, who seems to be working with the individual who gave Sora his card on the first floor. Axel summons his weapons and challenges Sora to test his strength. 
After defeating Axel, Axel provides him with another group of cards like the original hooded figure provided to him in the beginning of the castle. Sora uses these cards to advance deeper into the castle. After several Disney World revisits, each floor starts to fill Sora with the memory he had long forgotten. Sora begins to remember this girl back on Destiny Island. Sora mentions that he, Riku, Kairi, and this other girl used to play together on this island. Sora promised this girl that he would protect her if one of the meteors came and tried to hurt them. But Sora can't seem to remember her name. The higher Sora gets to the castle, the more Sora begins to remember about this girl, but still not her name. After clearing out the cards Axel laid out for him, you arrive on the floor where you meet Larxene, another member of the organization. After Larxene reveals to Sora that the girl that he can't remember is locked up in the castle, the memory of her returns to him in the form of Naminé. Sora, furious at Larxene for forcing that memory out of him, and for nearly destroying the lucky charm Naminé gave him, attacks and begins another fight. After the fight, Larxene provides Sora with even more cards to continue deeper into the castle. As Sora moves on, he runs into Riku, but something seems a little bit off about him. Sora, excited to see his friend again, is actually attacked by said friend, saying that he's the one who needs to protect Naminé and that Sora should just go home. Hesitant in fighting back, Sora stands and fights Riku, leading into more gameplay. Here on the 10th floor, Sora encounters Vexen. Vexen is another member of the organization sent out to destroy Sora. Sora makes the connection that Vexen is the reason why Riku has been acting out, so to free Riku, Sora battles Vexen. Sora and Vexen battle, in which Sora is victorious, and Vexen provides Sora with a brand new card. Vexen describes this card to be crafted from the other side of Sora's heart. When Sora goes to activate the card, it leads him to a world that he had never been to before, but a world that does feel familiar to him. This world is Twilight Town. Sora dives deeper into Twilight Town and reaches the outside of this sealed off mansion where Vexen is. They battle once again and Vexen loses once again. After the battle, Vexen almost spills the beans of the organization to Sora before Axel intervenes. Axel, calling Vexen a traitor to the organization, murders Vexen in a fiery explosion, completely getting rid of him. As we continue to Castle Oblivion, Riku should be freed from the control of Vexen now that he has been completely destroyed. But that isn't the case since Riku is still intent in fighting Sora to protect Naminé. This leads to the next world, Destiny Islands, Sora's home. Sora finally comes face to face with Naminé. Naminé, filled with guilt and resentment, comes clean about the fact that she was actually never a part of Sora's memories at all. There was another girl in Sora's memories, the person who meant the most to him in the world, but Sora can no longer remember this girl's name. This leads into the next floor in Castle Oblivion, where he confronts Naminé on what all that meant in Destiny Islands. But before they can continue their conversation, Sora gets interrupted by Riku one last time before they clash. Before Riku can deliver the final blow, Naminé breaks Riku's heart, making him into a lifeless puppet. Larxene steps in to reveal that that Riku is not actually the real Riku, but rather a puppet created by Fexen with fabricated memories. Larxene also reveals that the memories Sora were having about Naminé are completely fake, and all part of the plan to make the Keyblade Master into the puppet for the organization. Naminé has this power over Sora's memories that allows her to manipulate them to make Sora think whatever she wants. Sora gets really upset after hearing all of this, but remembers that he made a promise to Naminé to protect her. Sora doesn't care since the promise felt real to him, and attacks Larxene. After the fight, Larxene is defeated. Sora and Naminé finally have a real face-to-face -face conversation about everything that's been going on. Naminé explains how lonely she's been and how Marluxia, the figure who gave Sora the cards from the very beginning, has been forcing her to mess with his memories. Sora forgives Naminé for this, and Naminé explains that she can fix Sora's memories if they defeat Marluxia, so the gang heads up to the final floor. While all of this is going down though, Axel is actually revealed to be a traitor to the members of the organization in Castle Oblivion. Axel is attempting to stop Marluxia from taking over the organization. When Axel and Marluxia clash, Marluxia uses Naminé as a human shield like the coward he is, and Sora intervenes to stop Axel from doing so. When Axel is defeated, there's nothing stopping Sora from facing Marluxia on his own. Sora reaches the final floor, and Sora and Marluxia fight. After Marluxia is defeated, it's revealed that it was only an illusion. The real Marluxia is beyond that door. Sora goes and fights the real Marluxia and defeats him. After all that is done, Naminé gives Sora a choice. He can remember the times he had here at Castle Oblivion, or he can go back to his old memories. Sora decides to go back to his old memories. Naminé says that Sora, Donald, and Goofy need to sleep in these special pods so she can begin working on their memories. Jiminy puts thank Naminé in his journal to remember to thank her when they wake up. While in the pod, Naminé tells Sora that if he can remember the promise that he made to the other girl, the memories will come back much faster. Sora then begins to remember Kairi, and as Sora begins to fall asleep, Naminé begins work in putting his memory back together. 
But whoa, turns out there's actually a whole other part of this game to get through. Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories Reverse Rebirth tells the story of Riku inside of Castle Oblivion, but starting from the basement floor. This story is happening at the same time as Sora's. Riku is transported from the Realm of Darkness from Kingdom Hearts 1 to the basement of Castle Oblivion. Riku ends up fighting Vexen and obtains his data to create replica Riku that Sora has to deal with. The deeper Riku goes inside the castle, Ansem Seeker of Darkness attempts to take control of Riku again, but King Mickey uses his power to stop Ansem from taking control again. As Riku continued through the floors, he fights Lexius, another member of the organization, and defeats him using the power of darkness. During Riku's revisits to Destiny Islands, Riku is attacked by what seems to be Sora. Turns out that this Sora is actually just another member of the organization called Zexion, and Namine steps in to save Riku disguised as Kairi. This allows Riku to control his darkness and defeat Zexion in one of the coolest fights in the game in my opinion. Riku then meets Diz, a mysterious individual who sends him to find Namine. This leads Riku to Twilight Town, a place Sora visits in his memories but never actually visited before. This is where Replica Riku, yeah remember him, has learned that his entire existence is a lie. The only way he can justify his existence is to eliminate the real Riku, but he tries and gets bodied. As we approach the end of Riku's journey, Mickey is actually in Castle Oblivion now. And some Seeker of Darkness still has his grasp on Riku, and Riku has known this, growing, and has learned to accept the darkness within him. Riku defeats Ansem, the Seeker of Darkness, in a one-on-one -on -one battle. After this, Riku still feels the traces of Ansem inside of him and starts a journey of self-discovery with Mickey, where he learns to use both the light and darkness by walking the road to dawn. And that concludes both of our adventures in Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Kingdom Hearts 2 is a direct sequel to Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, as well as a game that ties together the elements from 358 Days Over 2, and considered by many the true sequel to Kingdom Hearts 1 being the next main numbered title in the franchise. The game begins not with Sora, but Roxas, who wakes up as an ordinary citizen in Twilight Town. These scenes pick up after the events of 358 Days Over 2, but Roxas does not remember any of the events from that game at the time of waking here. He instead remembers being lifelong friends with Hainer, Pence, and Olette in this small town, and is spending his last summer days before school begins again. Although he's trying to live his ordinary life in this town, many very very strange occurrences happen in this world, from the word photo being stolen and being literally unspeakable, to time freezing, to seeing men in black hoods and white creatures and a whole bunch of other weird real life glitch type of things. On numerous occasions where things in real life began acting up, Roxas is able to summon a Keyblade to deal with the strange enemies. Alongside strange daytime occurrences, Roxas every night has dreams that are Sora's exact memories from the first Kingdom Hearts game, and he wakes up every morning wondering why this happens. But it is through these dreams he learns more about the Keyblade, and while not knowing it yet, he's learning about himself as well. The craziness only ramps up the closer Roxas gets to the end of his summer vacation. Numerous people keep trying to contact him as Twilight Town freezes up, telling him about who he's supposed to be. There's Axel and the Nobodies, who come and try to convince Roxas that he's part of an organization, begging him to remember. There's the mysterious man named Diz, who is only trying to stop these Nobodies from butting in on this world and try to have Roxas passively continue his daily life. And then there's Namine, a girl who explains to him that a Nobody is a shell of a person who is not supposed to exist, and gives Roxas clues to help him figure out the reason he has the dreams and the strange occurrences. Roxas ends up trusting Namine the most in all of this discourse, leading him to come to the conclusion that he must find Sora. Roxas doing this causes Diz's plan to fall apart. The truth is, after Riku defeated Roxas at the end of days, they took his body and put him in a digital simulation of the real Twilight Town to observe Roxas and keep him here so that Namine can finish restoring Sora's memories and have Sora be able to awaken. Riku is working with Diz through this time period to ensure Sora will wake up, and when he's unhooded he's revealed to still take on the form of Ansem, Seeker of Darkness. Namine and Diz had similar goals, but went about them differently, with Diz not wanting Roxas to consciously understand or gain any semblance of individuality from Sora, and Namine treated Roxas more like a person and wanted to give him hope that everything would be okay, letting him know that they will meet again even if they don't recognize each other. 
Roxas slowly pieces together who he is and who he was back in days over this prologue and makes his way to the basement of the mansion to find Sora. Standing in his way was his old best friend from the organization, Axel. Although Roxas this time does understand who Axel really is, it's too late. Axel's been given orders from the organization to destroy Roxas, and it leads to a battle. Axel loses the fight, hoping to meet again with Roxas and flees the scene. Now, Roxas presses on to find Pods with sleeping Donald and Goofy and a sleeping Sora. Confronted by Diz in front of Sora's pod, Roxas asserts his own individuality one last time, though it falls on deaf ears. Diz's plan has come to fruition, and Roxas merges back with Sora in order to wake him up in a bittersweet scene. You thought our story was over? Oh, no 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 no, we're just beginning. Enter Sora. Our hero from the previous journey wakes up with Donald and Goofy waiting for him. The party only remembers the events from Kingdom Hearts 1, with no recollection of anything from Castle Oblivion or Nominee, despite seeing Thank Nominee in Jiminy's journal. The three are ready to set off on the next adventure, with the goal to find Riku and the King, who were behind the door at the end of Kingdom Hearts. They meet Hainer and the gang, and Sora feels a strange familiarity with them and the town despite meeting them and being here for the first time. At the station, the party is saved by King Mickey himself, from a wave of dusks, who only tells them to take the train and gives them a pouch of money to use. This reassurance was enough to give the party the morale to find Riku as well. The train took our heroes to the mysterious tower, where they briefly learned that Pete is sending in Heartless to please Maleficent, not knowing that she has been defeated in Kingdom Hearts 1. At the top of the tower, Master Yen Sid is introduced as a character who trained the king and will guide our heroes on their journey. Yen Sid explains that when a strong-willed being becomes a Heartless, a nobody is created as well. Nobodies are the empty shell that linger on without a heart, and the strongest of these, Organization 13, must be stopped alongside the Heartless. Sora, Donald, and Goofy conclude that they must find the King and Riku, put a stop to all of this, and go home after. Sora is granted new clothes from the three fairies, and the new adventure begins. Shortly after Sora leaves, the fairies realize that Maleficent has been resurrected and will surely stir more trouble along the way. Sora, Donald, and Goofy make it to Hollow Bastion, where Leon, Yuffie, Aerith, and Sid all welcome him, saying they all recently remembered Sora again. These are some of the members of the Hollow Bastion Restoration Committee. Hollow Bastion is dealing with a heartless and nobody problem, and they ask for Sora's help in clearing them out. After a little spring cleaning, Sora has his first run-in with the organization. The first of many. They taunt him now and will continue to do so here and there in the rest of the worlds along the way. These worlds are all Disney worlds that for the most part follow the Disney movie plotline with little sprinkles of the organization here and there. Notably, there's an original episode at Disney Castle that leads to going to a past classic Disney cartoon in order to preserve the cornerstone of light in the castle, as it's being attacked by Maleficent and Pete whose aim in this game is revealed to be finding a new castle for Maleficent. Meanwhile, back at Destiny Islands, Kairi has been slowly remembering Sora after being one of the people that forgot him after Chain of Memories. She feels that she needs to see this boy again. She goes to the shore to send a letter in a bottle to Sora. Kairi one day while visiting the shore is confronted by Axel, who says he can take her to Sora. Pluto is also here because... Pluto. Kairi briefly escapes to Twilight Town through the means of a dark portal, only to forcefully be captured by Axel and imprisoned by the organization as bait for Sora's anger. Sora, Donald, and Goofy eventually make it back to Twilight Town to find that nobodies are causing trouble here as well. Saix reveals himself to Sora and hints to him that Axel is no longer acting in the organization's best interest, while encouraging Sora to defeat as many Heartless as possible. Hainer, Pence, and Olette tell Sora about Kairi's brief visit to Twilight Town and let him know that someone took her away. Now Sora's back to square one, looking for both Riku and Kairi. Next, the gang revisits Hollow Bastion. The committee found a secret entrance to Ansem's computer which could lead to more information on the organization and the enemies we've been facing. King Mickey surfaces here to help too. After figuring out the passwords, the king explains that the blonde man displayed on the computer is Ansem. Ansem the Wise, and this other guy who was the origin of the heartless Ansem Seeker of Darkness and his nobody was actually Ansem's apprentice named Xehanort. He stole Ansem's name, and the Ansem we knew in Kingdom Hearts 1 was really just Xehanort's Heartless. The chaos in Hollow Bastion is getting worse, so the entire Restoration Committee teams up to defeat thousands and thousands of Heartless and Nobodies. 
Before Sora, Donald, and Goofy are able to join the fight, they run into Demix from Organization 13 and are able to defeat him. After this, the three team up with the rest of the committee to defeat thousands of Heartless invading the world. Later on, they briefly confront Xemnas, the leader of Organization 13, and Xehanort's nobody. Axel then shows up and reveals to Sora that defeating all of these Heartless with the Keyblade has been releasing hearts to create Kingdom Hearts. Him giving Sora this information is betraying the organization. Defeating Heartless this entire time has been playing right into Organization 13's hands. This demoralizes Sora, and he refuses to fight more Heartless even when Saiyak summons more right in front of Sora. Here, Sora is saved by an unlikely ally, Maleficent, and is able to escape the world. Back in the gummy ship, the party finds that they were given a photo and some ice cream, perhaps clues on what to do next. After this, Sora, Donald, and Goofy revisit many of the worlds from the first round, this time with slightly more emphasis on Organization 13 and original Nobody plots. Notably, Zaldin in Beast's castle has taken an interest in Beast giving in to his rage in order to get Beast to give in to the darkness in his heart. Zaldin, member number 3 of Organization 13, fails and is defeated here. The party also revisits Hollow Bastion one last time to solve a mystery in Ansem's computer and bring peace to this world. This restores Hollow Bastion's name back to the original name for this world, Radiant Garden. Sora, Donald, and Goofy meet back up in Twilight Town with King Mickey. The ice cream and the photo of Roxas from back in the prologue of the game, along with a duplicate of Olet's homemade money pouch, lead them to figure out that they need to use the computer to go to Roxas's data Twilight Town. Sora concludes that these clues were given to him by Riku, which Mickey is unable to confirm due to a promise he made to Riku. In the data Twilight Town, they find a portal that leads to the realm between. Here, they are ambushed by nobodies, but surprisingly, Axel appears to help Sora and sacrifices himself in an all-out attack to get rid of the enemies. As Axel is fading away, he apologizes for his actions. Making their way to the castle, Sora is confronted by Roxas, who is currently within Sora's heart. A battle takes place, and after Sora wins, Roxas is accepting of being Sora's nobody, and his being connects with Axel's for one final metaphorical ice cream as they say their bittersweet goodbyes. Kairi escapes from the prison with Naminé's help, and Sora is even able to get a brief glimpse of her. She's with Riku, who gives her a keyblade of her own to fight with. King Mickey reunites with Diz, who reveals himself to be Ansem the Wise, the real Ansem. He tried to bear the burden of dealing with Organization 13 all on his own, admitting that he was wrong for going about things this way and getting too wrapped up with the idea of revenge. After defeating Zigbar, Sora meets up with Kairi and she reveals to him that this figure who looks like Xehanort's Heartless is actually Riku. The Destiny Trio has their long-awaited reunion. Sora then defeats two more Organization members on his way up to the castle, Luxord and Saix, and Riku reveals to Sora that he fought Roxas and that Roxas is his nobody, something Sora has been wondering about for this entire story. Ansem the Wise points his machine at the Kingdom Hearts that the organization has created, attempting to encode it into data. Hearts prove to be too unpredictable though, overloading the machine and causing it to explode. Ansem the Wise disappears in the explosion and it also causes Riku to return to his true form. With no more organization members left standing except for the leader, the group heads up to the top of the castle for the final confrontation. Xemnas refuses to back down from the heroes and fights back alone. After a few clashes, in a moment of peace, Roxas and Naminé have a reunion, although it's through the bodies of Sora and Kairi. It's just like Naminé said, they may not recognize each other the next time they meet. The nobodies are accepting of their fate, knowing that whenever Sora and Kairi are together, they will be together too. Everyone is able to return home except for Sora and Riku, who are ambushed by Xemnas one last time. This fight leads them to a realm between for the final clash, where Sora and Riku unite for one final Keyblade Beam to land the finishing blow. After Xemnas is defeated, it's not quite the end, and Sora and Riku are ambushed by nobodies. Afterwards, they are led to the Realm of Darkness, unable to find a way back home. As they begin to accept their fate of being trapped in this dark world, a letter washes up to the shore. It was the letter that Kairi wrote to Sora from Destiny Islands. It found its way to Sora in the Realm of Darkness. This opens a door to light that transports Sora and Riku back home to Destiny Islands in the Realm of Light. 
where they find not only Kyrie there waiting for them, but Donald, Goofy, and Mickey too. For the first time since the worlds fell to darkness in Kingdom Hearts 1, the Destiny trio is finally reunited at home. After the dust settles and everyone returns to their respective worlds, Kyrie approaches Sora and Riku with a letter that seems to have arrived from King Mickey himself. They open the letter, and just like that, a new journey was set to begin. Kingdom Hearts 358 Days Over 2 was released for the Nintendo DS in 2009 and serves as an interquel to a number of games in the series that also runs alongside their story. It starts at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1, alongside the entirety of Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, and ends at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2. The game primarily features and focuses on Roxas, Sora's nobody, and his time as part of Organization 13, culminating to the reason why he abandoned the faction and his eventual clash and capture by Riku, answering questions left open after the end of Kingdom Hearts 2. Roxas was born from the moment Sora released Kairi's heart from within himself in Kingdom Hearts 1 and became a heartless. He awakened in Twilight Town with no memories of his own and was promptly found by Xemnas, who led the Organization 13. There, Xemnas offered to give the displaced Roxas a purpose, branding him with his new name, rank of number 13, and the title of Key of Destiny. Roxas now made the Organization 13 whole. Roxas would then be introduced to the other members of the organization and even converse with Xemnas at the Realm of Darkness six days after he had joined. Before Roxas would begin his training, a new member would be introduced as well, number 14, Xion. From then on, select members of the organization would train Roxas in combat, mission structure, and other details. Slowly, Roxas would come to understand that the members of the organization were nobodies, beings who had lost their heart and don't truly exist and the goal of the organization was to reclaim a heart so they could be made whole again. To that end, they collect hearts to complete an artificial version of Kingdom Hearts. Roxas proved vital to this plan. As Sora's nobody, he had the ability to wield a Keyblade, the only weapon capable of truly releasing hearts from Heartless the organization defeated in order to collect hearts. Throughout the days, Roxas would start to form a personality all his own, thanks to his own experiences and forming a friendship with fellow organization member Axel. After every mission, they would meet at the clock tower in the world of Twilight Town to eat sea salt ice cream together and watch the sunset. After some time had passed, Axel, along with other members of the organization, were assigned to a long-term mission at Castle Oblivion, and Roxas would soon be left alone to eat ice cream at the tower. It was in this mission that Syx, number 7 of the organization, tasked Axel to dispatch any and all traitors sent to the castle. This would lead directly into the events of Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. With Axel gone, Roxas was then given the responsibility of taking Xion onto missions. A responsibility he was indifferent to, as Xion was silent, hooded, and showed no signs of a personality. That soon changed, as she would begin to speak to Roxas, and then even reveal her face, which showed an uncanny likeness to another character within the series, Kairi. When Xion saved Roxas from a dark side, it was revealed that she too could wield the Keyblade. Upon this further understanding, Roxas invited Xion to share in his tradition with Axel, eating ice cream on top of the tower in Twilight Town. After this, a bond quickly formed between the two. Soon, word started circulating that all members sent to Castle Oblivion had been eliminated, including Axel. During a mission with Zigbar, Roxas inquires on the nature of Heartless and Nobodies when they are destroyed. Upon their attempt to return home, Roxas falls into a coma, which would last several weeks. This was due to Sora being put to sleep in order to repair his memories. During this time, Roxas started to see memories of Sora himself, and Xion would bring seashells for him after missions. Sometime later, Roxas would finally wake up to find the seashells brought to him by Xion, and would meet her at the tower. Not long after that, Axel would appear to Roxas as the sole survivor of the events at Castle Oblivion, despite previous reports of everyone being eliminated there. Overjoyed, Roxas buys Axel some ice cream and tells him that he's been doing their post-mission tradition with Xion, and that he would like for all of them to partake at once, in which they eventually do, and all bond together, becoming best of friends. However, things will start to take a turn for the grim. Roxas soon sees more and more of Sora's memories while Namine attempts to repair them during Sora's slumber. This leads to confusion on Roxas's part, 
questioning his own identity, purpose, and why he's able to use the Keyblade. His questions go unanswered within the organization, leading to more of his frustration. Axel is pressed by Saks for answers due to his time spent with Roxas and Shion and is ordered to accomplish more of the icky jobs in order to serve his and Saks' own objectives within the organization. This leaves Axel stumbling upon undesirable truths. And Shion eventually encounters Riku, who upon defeating her claims that her Keyblade is a sham and worthless. This leads to a massive identity crisis for Shion, who eventually will come to discover what Axel had learned earlier, that she is an imperfect replica of Sora created by Vexen using his leaked memories, and the reason she looks like Kairi is because she is Sora's strongest memory. This project was ordered by Xemnas as a failsafe in case both Sora and Roxas proved inadequate for the organization's plans. This truth puts Shion at a crossroads as she becomes more and more torn between staying with Roxas and Axel or returning to Sora. However, that would come at a massive cost, as it not only would end her existence, but since her entire identity was based on memories that did not belong to her originally, she would be forgotten by all who knew her. Meanwhile, Xemnas, Zigbar, and Saix would use these developments to their own advantage, as the worst was yet to come. It became very apparent that Roxas would grow weaker, while Xion would grow stronger. The truth is obvious. Xion's existence had become to gradually absorb powers from Roxas and claim them as her own. Xemnas took this as an opportunity and hoped to pit Xion and Roxas against each other to see who would eliminate who and take all the power for themselves, which in turn would be taken advantage of by the organization. By this point, and thanks to the guidance of Riku, Xion had enough and decided to desert the organization in order to do what's right and return herself to Sora so that he may wake up from his slumber, which at this point was already put in jeopardy thanks to the existence of Roxas and Xion. Roxas also had his own problems dealing with the revelations of Xion and his own identity. After consulting both Xemnas and Axel for answers and not getting much other than the fact that Xion and Roxas are connected through Sora, Roxas was done with the organization and decided to abandon them as well, not before besting Saix and rebuffing Axel. After this departure, Axel was barely able to retrieve Xion as he was ordered to do so. Collapsed, Xion was then taken by Xemnas for reprogramming before confronting Roxas at the Twilight Town Tower, bearing the resemblance of Sora and with the twisted intent of absorbing Roxas in order to complete her own existence. Roxas, however, defeats her, and Xion then passes peacefully in his arms, but not before pleading to Roxas to release all the hearts they had gathered within Kingdom Hearts. Xion fades, returning her power to Roxas and leaving behind a single seashell. Roxas, griefed, saddened, and enraged, returns to the world that never was with the intent to challenge Xemnas directly and free Kingdom Hearts. He is stopped by Riku, who was sent by Diz to capture Roxas so that Nominate can complete Sora's restoration. A duel ensues in which Roxas defeats Riku twice. This forces Riku to use the dark powers of Ansem, Seeker of Darkness, who still lingered in his heart after the events of Kingdom Hearts 1. Riku is then able to put Roxas into submission and capture him. Diz then takes Roxas and places him within a digital Twilight Town to await his reunion with Sora, which leads into the events of Kingdom Hearts 2. It is by this time that everyone who ever knew Xion had forgotten her and that the organization had begun their quest to retrieve Roxas and continue building Kingdom Hearts. Originally released in 2010, the story follows the adventure and fate of three young Keyblade wielders, Terra, Aqua, and Ventus, and explores the origin of the series' main villain, Xehanort. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep is the second game chronologically in the series, and takes place ten years before the events of Kingdom Hearts 1. The plot goes through each character's individual perspectives, but knowing all three gives full clarity on all events. The story can be experienced in any order, but for brevity, I'm gonna talk about all the stories together at the same time, so here we go. Master Xehanort holds 
holds an unconscious and unshirted Ventus on Destiny Islands, and while unconscious, Ven looks into his heart and realizes it's fractured. A voice reaches out to Ven and offers to mend his heart. With his heart being restored, he awakens, summoning his Keyblade. Fast forward a little bit, and Ven is alive and well, laying in his bed in the Land of Departure, where he is being trained as a Keyblade wielder. He notices a meteor shower and gets really super excited about it and goes out to see it. While outside, Aqua comes to visit him along with Terra. They spend some time under the stars, and Aqua gives Terra and Ven wayfinders as a symbol of their friendship, and I get all teary-eyed in the process. The next day, Terra and Aqua are put through the Mark of Mastery, a test to be deemed a Keyblade Master by their teacher, Master Ericus, who has also invited Master Xehanort as a guest to observe the test. Terra and Aqua's test ends with a combat trial between each other, during which Terra channels darkness briefly in the fight. Since Ericus kinda low-key hates darkness, he names Aqua the Master and not Terra, which he becomes discouraged about, along with questioning where the darkness even came from. Aqua is then shown some master secrets by Ericus, and Master Xehanort goes off to secretly talk to a boy in a mask, who says they are going to need to break Ven in, but Xehanort doesn't want it to be done here since he still needs to quote-unquote keep up appearances. Ericus soon gets news of a threat called the Unverse, dark beings terrorizing the worlds. In an effort to combat them, Ericus sends Terra and Aqua to find the source of the Unverse and destroy it, but he also secretly tasks Aqua to keep an eye on Terra during this time so he doesn't dip his fingies into darkness more. As Terra is gearing up to leave the Land of Departure, Ven is approached by the boy in a mask named Vanitas, saying that Terra is gonna be in trouble. Ven being distressed, he decides to leave home to follow Terra. Eric is not wanting Ven to leave home, tells Aqua to bring him back. And so the three heroes head off to see the world with their own goals in mind. But eventually Ven has another quick run-in with Vanitas at the Keyblade Graveyard, where Vanitas claims he wants to see what he's made of. During their scrap, a young King Mickey flies in and helps Ven fight. Vanita soon retreats, and Mickey befriends Ven and states that he has a thing called the Star Shard that caused him to show up in the first place, but he doesn't really know how it works. After they talk, the star kicks in again, and Mickey is yeeted away. Later, while flying in space, Terra is contacted by Master Xehanort and meets him in the Keyblade Graveyard, where he is told that Vanitas is the darkness in Ven's heart and was created to save Ven after a training accident, which was why Ven was put under Ericus's care since Xehanort felt guilty causing him so much harm. After the first three worlds, the trio finds themselves in Radiant Garden. Aqua also comes to the castle at a different time and battles a group of Unverse who are attacking a young Kyrie, and Mickey suddenly appears to help as well. After the fight, the two befriend each other, but Mickey is, once again, yeeted out by the Star Shard. But Aqua senses a strong light in Kyrie since she's cute as hell, and gives her a spell of protection. Eventually, though, the trios end up crossing paths when they team up to battle a big, chunky Unverse. Soon after, Terra comes across a man named Brig, who claims he has mastered Master Xehanort as his prisoner. Terra, being skeptical, goes to check it out and finds Master Xehanort tied up, and Brig says he wants a Keyblade for himself. The two battle, and Terra ends the fight with a final shot of darkness to Brig's face, permanently scarring him. Terra frees Xehanort, and the Master encourages Terra to use his dark powers and explains light and darkness need to be in a balance, and that Ericus, Ven, and Aqua's light shines too bright. He tells him to see more worlds, channel darkness more, and destroy Vanitas, referring to him as Master Terra. On her way out of range, Radiant Garden, Aqua is confronted by Vanitas. The two fight with Aqua winning. Vanitas laughs up the fight and congratulates Aqua, saying he will keep her around and it doesn't hurt to have a backup. Ven, now kinda down in the dumps about everything, is approached by a young man named Lee and his friend Isa. The two banter and have a little spar. Lee takes the L and says him and Ven are friends now. Isa asks why he always tries to pick up so many stray puppies. Lee then says he wants everyone he meets to remember him, claiming through people's memories he can live forever. But during their adventure, Ventus comes across Mickey's Star Shard without the Mickey, which takes him to the mysterious tower where he meets Master Yen Sid, Goofy, and Donald. Ven explains he's friends with Mickey, but it seems he's lost since he got separated from the Star Shard. With Yen Sid's magic, they find out Mickey ain't doing so hot at the Keyblade Graveyard, and Ven says he will bring Mickey back home. Meanwhile, Terra finds himself on Destiny Island since he was drawn to the light while inner monologuing or something, I don't know, and he comes across a young Sora and Riku and takes notice of them Playing. Terra then senses Riku's power, ambition, and will to protect after Riku tells him about a boy who left the island long ago and he bets he's very strong now, implying he envies him. Terra then gives Riku the power to inherit a Keyblade when he is ready. Soon after though, Ventus arrives at the Keyblade graveyard to find an unconscious Mickey. Suddenly, Master Xehanort appears and it causes Ven to have flashbacks. He then tells Ven that he has the power to create the Keyblade, or the Kyblade, or the X-Blade, I don't know, basically the ultimate. Key, all right? He also tells Ven Ericus knew of this power and 
and that's why he didn't want him to see other worlds. With Venom being pissed off to high hell, Xehanort sends him to confront Ericus. Terra then shows up soon after, and Xehanort warns him that Ven be pissy and is about to get very real with Ericus, and he needs to protect Ven. Terra then rushes to the land of departure. Ericus then has a flashback where he asks Xehanort why he seeks the X-Blade, and Xehanort claims he wants to use the X-Blade to unlock the door to the Keyblade War, since legends say it created a precious light. Ericus says he will not let Xehanort's ambition come true, not while he lives. Their argument turns into a fight, and Xehanort permanently scars Ericus' face with his dark powers. The flashback ends, and Ericus turns on Ven since he sees it as the only way to stop Xehanort from making the X-Blade. Right as he is about to strike, Terra shows up to stop the attack. Ericus then warns Terra that if he does not stand down, he will share Ven's fate. Terra, determined to save his friend, gives into his dark powers, sends Ven flying out of the world, and battles Ericus. Their clash then weakens Ericus, and he realizes what he has caused. He then apologizes for stirring the darkness in Terra and attacking Ven. Then suddenly, Master Xehanort appears and lands a final blow to Ericus, causing him to vanish in Terra's arms. With Terra being sad and confused, Xehanort says he did the right thing and that he should give into the darkness, telling him to come to the Keyblade Graveyard so he can see Ven and Aqua meet their end. He then plunges the Land of Departure into darkness and disappears. It turns out Terra ended up sending Ven away to Destiny Islands, where he's then confronted by Venetus, who provokes him to join with him to become the X-Blade. This triggers more of Ven's flashbacks, and it shows him with Xehanort as he attempts to make the X-Blade then and there. When it fails, Xehanort then forces the darkness out of Ven to create Venetus. This process is what caused Ven's heart to fracture at the start of the game. The flashback ends, and Ven refuses to clash with Venetus, so he then tells Ven he will give him a reason to fight, threatening to choke the life out of his friends at the Keyblade Graveyard. He then leaves the world. Soon after, Aqua arrives at Destiny Islands and meets a young Sora and Riku. Talking with them for a bit, she realizes Riku has already inherited the power of the Keyblade, but encourages Sora to keep Riku safe. After leaving the island, she finds Mickey unconscious in space. She rescues him and brings him to Yen Sid, where he tells her Master Ericus has been struck down, saying Master Xehanort and Terra are most likely responsible. He tells her that they are at the Keyblade graveyard, and she leaves to see what is up. The trio then arrive at the Keyblade graveyard, where Aqua says she knows the Master was struck down, which Terra confirms. Master Xehanort appears, and they try to battle him. In the attempt, Ven is frozen still by Xehanort, but is caught by Aqua. However, it separates the trio, and Terra faces Xehanort and Venetus alone. They clash for a bit, and Xehanort orders Venetus to join with Ven and kill Aqua. While Ven is still frozen, Aqua is confronted by Brig. The two battle, and she overpowers him, but suddenly is knocked out by Venetus. Ven, being like super mad, breaks free of the ice, and the two battle. After the fight, Venetus holds down Ven with strong unverse, removes his mask to reveal he has the face of that of an older Sora, and tells Ven that he is the source of the Unverse, and that they used them to make Ven stronger so they could clash and forge the X-Blade. The two then join together. Meanwhile, Terra and Xehanort are still battling things out, but when Ven and Venetus merge, Xehanort then takes his Keyblade, stabs himself, and releases his heart, saying out with the old and in with the new, claiming Terra's body will be his new vessel and his darkness will sustain him. Terra activates his armor to protect himself, but Xehanort's heart takes over his body, creating Terranort, which is like the unofficial canon name. That is not like legit, that's just what we call it, okay? As he walks away though, Terra's <laughs> lingering will brings his armor to life in a last ditch effort to take his body back. While the two fight, Aqua awakens to find Ven and Venetus have merged, holding the X-Blade. She battles them to help undo the process, while Ven is in his heart battling Venetus in spirit. But the group is successful. They end up breaking the X-Blade, but it causes a massive explosion. Terra's armor is also successful in knocking out Terranor, but the explosion wipes the battlefield clean, leaving their fate unknown. Aqua brings an unconscious Ven back to Yen Sid, but the battle damaged Ven's heart so much it basically just left. And Yen Sid said his heart went to find a friend who believes in him and who will show him the way home. Aqua says she will protect Ven while he sleeps. She then carries him out of the mysterious tower, and Ven's Keyblade opens a pathway. It leads them to the Land of Departure, which has been devastated by the darkness Xehanort brought. Aqua then finds Master Ericus's Keyblade, and she remembers the secret she learned after becoming a master. That the Keyblade wielders devised a trick to protect their world, and with its transformation, anyone who enters will be lost to oblivion, and Aqua will be the only one to solve its mysteries. With Ericus's Keyblade, she locks the Land of Departure and turns it into Castle Oblivion, where she intends to keep Ven safe while he sleeps. Aqua then senses Terra calling out 
out to her and she heads to Radiant Gardens where she comes across Terra North. Aqua then demands he returns Terra's heart or pays the price. The two battle and after the fight Terra North falls into a pool of darkness leading into the realm of darkness but Aqua jumps in to save him. She tries to speed out after catching Terra North's body but fears they won't make it out in time so she sends her armor and glider to carry Terra North out faster while she stays behind. We then see a young Sora and Riku relaxing on the beach at night and Sora suddenly starts crying but isn't sad himself. Riku explains he thinks that someone out there is really hurting. He tells Sora that maybe he should just open his heart and listen, which Sora then tries. The scene cuts to Ven sleeping and Sora's voice asks if he can hear him, implying Ven's heart found his way to Sora. Aqua's rescue ends up being successful and with Terranort back in Radiant Gardens and his memory like still super fried, he is met by Ansem the Wise who takes him under his wing. Brig, who is then revealed to be working for Ansem but was keeping all this Xehanort collab stuff under wraps, picks up Terranort and asks Dylan to get Aqua's armor as well. We then see Terra and Xehanort talking in spirit form or whatever, with the two passively aggressively taking shots at each other, but Terra seems confident he will overpower Xehanort one day. But Xehanort says he is not worried since Terra was just one of the many roads he could take. We then see Terra Nord walking the castle halls in Radiant Gardens at an unspecified time, and Brig tries to confirm if the amnesia is real and checks if Terra Nord isn't still just Terra, with Terra Nord not being very responsive. And some of the wise holding hands with a young Yenzo looks off at the two with suspicion. The game's secret ending blank points shows Aqua being in the realm of darkness for quite some time where she expresses she doesn't know how long she's been there, but eventually she finds herself at the shores at the end of the realm where she meets Ansem the Wise in a black coat, whose brain has been totally cursed scuffled but he implies he was brought here after the machine explosion in Kingdom Hearts 2. They then talk for a bit and Ansem tells Aqua of a boy who saved the world, Aqua asking if the boy's names were Ven or Terra and Ansem saying it was neither. He then tells Aqua he regrets hurting and using the boy for his selfish needs and that he hid his data inside him while he slept since he thought that's where it could serve a purpose. He says the boy touched so many hearts and that he thinks he can save the ruined lives and open the right door. Aqua asks what the boy's name is and Ansem, along with all major Kingdom Hearts characters in a sequence, say Sora. With hopeful tears, Aqua repeats his name and looks off into the distance. Kingdom Hearts Recoded is a remake of the mobile game Coded. The general premise of the story is that Jiminy loses entries to his journal after reading Thank Nomine. He then shuffles through the pages to read a message that says, Their hurting will be mended when you return to end it. He rushes to bring the journal to King Mickey, telling him that there is a mysterious message that he himself did not write. In an attempt to salvage the pages Jiminy wrote, King Mickey translates the journal using a computer. They realize that the journal's data is all jumbled and cannot be read. So they decide to awaken Data Sora to explore from the inside by reenacting the contents of the journal. A hooded figure appears with Data Sora upon his awakening. Jiminy does not recognize the other person and Data Sora is instructed to follow them. The ultimate goal is to discover who is hurting and be able to save them. Sora travels through multiple worlds in the Datascape attempting to debug the journal by destroying blocks known as bugs and the digital Heartless. Donald, Goofy, Mickey, and Jiminy enter the datascape by an avatar of the journal's uncorrupted data. It takes the form of a virtual Riku, aka Data Riku, and is used to assist Data Sora in debugging the journal. Along the way, they come across Pete and Maleficent, who destroy Sora's Keyblade, and kidnap Data Riku. He continues through the datascape with the help of Donald and Goofy, and eventually regains the power of the Keyblade when something inside of him changed. Mickey believes that a new part of him had been awakened through strength of heart. In Hollow Bastion, Pete infects Data Riku's code with bugs, which forces him to fight Data Sora. Data Sora then chooses to debug Data Riku, which would cause a complete reset, including his memories. It also causes the bug that infected Riku to take the form of Sora's Heartless. Sora destroys it, and Mickey and the others are returned back to their world by Data Riku before the reset would happen. Riku maintains consciousness of what is going on, unlike Sora, and helps Mickey back into the datascape to help guide Data Sora one last time 
and tell him the truth about what's going on. Mickey guides the reset data Sora to an extra world that is based on Castle Oblivion, where Sora must use cards to unlock illusions that help him regain his memory. He then comes across a virtual Roxas and feels deeply hurt through a connection between them. Data Sora defeats Data Roxas and is given access to the deepest parts of the data. Roxas disappears into Sora's heart. Sora uses the card he is given by Data Roxas to enter a room where he meets a Data Nomine. She reveals that the real Nomine is the one who had left the message after discovering a set of Sora's painful memories tied to everyone connected to him. Nomine says she needed to find a way for Sora to face the hurt leading up to finding these memories, otherwise his heart could have been broken. She reveals that she used the bugs as a tool to cause Sora the hurt she wanted him to endure. She has Data Sora touch the orb she is holding, where he is then given back all of his memories. Before she disappears, she explains that Sora must save the people in his memories, and that they are still connected. Sora is sure to thank Nomine, just like the journal says, and with that, Nomine disappears in an emotional moment. At the end of Kingdom Hearts 2, we see Sora, Kairi, and Riku reading a bottled letter from the king which relays the message that Nomine wanted to give to them. The letter reveals that their journeys have been leading to this moment, and it's time for Sora to help those he is connected to. In a secret ending that is exclusive to Recoded, Mickey and Yen Sid are talking about the location of Terra, Aqua, and Ventus, and Yen Sid says that he believes the destruction of Xehanort's Heartless will ultimately lead to the return of Master Xehanort himself. Yen Sid orders Mickey to bring Sora and Riku to him, where they will compete for their mark of mastery. It then cuts to Brig talking to young Xehanort about the Keyblade War. At the very end, we see multiple members of the organization in their human form passed out on the ground, leading to the next installment, Dream Drop Distance. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance serves as the bridge between Kingdom Hearts 2 and Kingdom Hearts 3. With Xehanort's Heartless Ansem and Xehanort's Nobody Xemnas now destroyed, his original body, Master Xehanort, will soon return. Anticipating this, Master Yen Sid summons Sora and Riku to his tower. If our heroes are to stop Master Xehanort's newest plan, they will need to become true Keyblade Masters. Master Yen Sid holds a Mark of Mastery exam so that Sora and Riku can unlock this new power. For the exam, Sora and Riku will be entering the Realm of Sleep, and this realm holds various worlds that once fell to the darkness, but they did not fully revive following Ansem's defeat at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1. These seven sleeping worlds need to be returned to the Realm of Light through sealing their keyholes. Once Sora and Riku manage to do this, they should unlock the power of waking and become true Keyblade Masters. Yen Sid sends Sora and Riku, now in their younger forms from Kingdom Hearts 1, back in time to the Destiny Islands as the world is about to enter the Realm of Sleep. From there, they dive through the realm and begin unlocking the Sleeping World's keyholes while battling various villains and encountering a new life form that resides in the Realm of Sleep, Dream Eaters. These colorful monsters come in two types, good or bad, spirit or nightmare respectively. Sora and Riku enlist the help of spirits to help them get an edge in combat. Meanwhile, in the Realm of Light, the former members of Organization 13 begin to awaken in Radiant Garden. Their heartless and nobody forms were destroyed, so just like Xehanort, they've gotten a second chance at life and most of them don't seem too interested in rejoining their old leader. It doesn't take long for Axel to notice the absence, though, of Zigbar and Saix, so he leaves to investigate. Meanwhile, Maleficent and Pete have their own evil plans as well, and send a letter to King Mickey revealing that they're holding Queen Minnie hostage at Disney Castle. When Mickey and company arrive to confront Maleficent, she reveals what she's after. The data worlds that Mickey had created when he turned Jiminy's journal into data back in Kingdom Hearts Recoded. 
Of course, her plans go up in smoke with the appearance of Axel, who helps Mickey and the gang rescue Minnie. Upon returning to Yensid's tower, Axel makes his intentions known. Axel wants to become a Keyblade wielder as well and help out Sora and the gang. Yensid accepts this request and sends Axel to Merlin and the Three Fairies, who help him train using magic to compress time around him, so that his training can be finished faster. Back in the Realm of Sleep, both Sora and Riku encounter some old foes, Ansem and Xemnas, as well as a mysterious young man who takes pleasure in taunting our heroes throughout the sleeping worlds. After many battles, Sora and Riku do end up succeeding and sealing the seven keyholes of sleep and complete their exam. Or so they thought. After the final keyhole is sealed, Sora finds himself outside the realm of sleep and at the Organization 13 stronghold, the world that never was. Shortly after arriving, Sora is confronted by Zigbar and the mysterious young man who put Sora into another deep sleep. It's then that this young man reveals himself to be a time-traveling younger version of Master Xehanort. This ability of time travel was given to him by Xehanort's Heartless, who traveled back in time to set him on this path and reveal Master Xehanort's Grand Master Plan. From here, Sora continues to fall deeper and deeper into his own dreams and the world that never was. During his trek, he finds himself face to face with Namine, Terra, Aqua, Ventus, Shion, and Roxas, who shows Sora all of his memories, causing great strain to Sora and continuing to weaken his heart. Before Sora can reach the castle that never was, Sora is confronted by Zigbar and Xemnas, who have plenty of things to reveal. As it turns out, the true goal of Organization 13 in Kingdom Hearts 2 was to use the power of their artificial Kingdom Hearts to turn every member of the organization into Xehanort. It's here that Zigbar reveals that he is already half Xehanort, as you can see from his Xehanort-like eye. Unfortunately, some members were unfit to be vessels for Xehanort. Part of this is of course due to Sora and company's intervention, but the other major part is from the hearts that began growing in the organization members. It's revealed now that nobodies, after a certain amount of time, will create a heart of their own to replace the one that they lost. Zigbar tries to get Sora to join Organization 13 as their 13th vessel, but Sora refuses and does battle with Xemnas. While Sora does come out on top, the strain from the battle was too much on his heart, and it puts him in a coma as young Xehanort comments on the magic X they put on Sora's torso. A tracker of sorts so they could follow him throughout the exam, something they call the Recusant's Sigil. As Sora falls deeper and deeper into the darkness of his heart, he is saved by Ventus' heart, who encases Sora in Ventus' Keyblade armor to protect him from that darkness. While these events are going on, Riku arrives in the castle that never was after sealing his seventh keyhole. It's here that he battles against a hooded nightmare that is tormenting the dreaming Sora, and Xehanort's Heartless who reveals that once the Mark of Mastery exam had begun, Riku entered Sora's dreams and protected him from harm as a Dream Eater, which explains why Riku had a spirit insignia on his back. Riku, showing unwavering resolve, defeats Xehanort's Heartless once again, leaves Sora's dreams, and returns to the real world. It's then that Riku makes his way toward the throne room of the castle that never was to save his friend. Upon arriving, Riku finds Sora still asleep in one of the 13 thrones. Before Riku has a chance to act, he is intercepted by young Xehanort, who reveals that Sora will be the 13th Xehanort vessel. It's then that every member of this true Organization 13 begin to appear, as well as Master Xehanort who slowly begins to revive. In a last ditch effort to stop this plan, King Mickey enters the scene and uses his magic to freeze time. Master Xehanort isn't one to be trifled with, however, and he possesses his younger self to bypass the frozen time, knock out Mickey, and do battle with Riku. Riku wins the fight, but the time it took to finish the fight was more than enough time for Master Xehanort to complete his resurrection. Master Xehanort reveals his ultimate goal, 
is to have his new organization, the 13 Seekers of Darkness, to fight our heroes, the Seven Guardians of Light, and the resulting clash will create the X-Blade, or known as the Key Blade. Awaken the true kingdom hearts with it, and start a new Keyblade war. Xemnas and Xehanort's Heartless then pin Riku and Mickey down, so that Master Xehanort can safely transfer a piece of his heart to Sora. Thankfully, at the last possible second, Axel appears and is able to stop Master Xehanort's plan. One of the other members of the organization immediately attacks Axel in response, and is revealed to be Saix, Axel's old friend and yet another seeker of darkness. Things begin looking dire for our heroes, but Donald and Goofy show up at the last second to save the day as well. With Master Xehanort's 13th vessel plan foiled, he bids our heroes farewell as this new Organization 13 vanishes, but not before Xehanort proclaims they will meet again soon to do battle at what he calls the Fated Place, which is likely the Keyblade Graveyard. Riku and the gang return to Yen Sid's tower with a sleeping Sora and inform Yen Sid of Master Xehanort's plans for the Realm of Light. With everyone up to speed, Riku uses the power of waking he obtained from sealing the sleeping keyholes to enter Sora's heart and wake him up. This ends up being quite the challenge for Riku as he's forced to do battle with Sora, who is trapped in Ventus's armor that has been fully corrupted by darkness. Riku wins this fight, but Sora disappears, leaving behind his Keyblade. When Riku uses the Keyblade, he finds himself in the Destiny Islands and is faced with visions of the three beings that reside in Sora's heart, those being Ventus, Roxas, and Shion. After answering their questions, Riku meets a data version of Ansem the Wise. He reveals that Ansem the Wise had hidden some research data inside Sora after he was recovering in Kingdom Hearts' Chain of Memories and that this, alongside the power that Sora seems to have with his connection to people's hearts, could be the key to saving the people who have been lost, like Shion, Roxas, and Ventus. Data Ansem then reveals that Sora should be fully recovered now and awake in the real world, so Riku makes his return and finds a perfectly happy and healthy Sora. With the exam over, Yen Sid announces that Riku passed the exam, but Sora failed due to falling to the darkness. Riku is shocked and also concerned for his friend, but Sora, instead of being sad about it, is overjoyed that his friend is now a true Keyblade Master. Axel then reveals to Sora and Riku his intentions on being a Keyblade wielder, and at that very moment, gets his Keyblade to appear for the first time. While Sora returns to the Sleeping Worlds to thank the Dream Eaters who helped him on his journey, Yen Sid and King Mickey theorize that Xehanort may go after the Seven Princesses of Heart, so seven powerful Guardians of Light will be needed. It's then that Riku arrives at Yen Sid's tower with Kairi, as it's revealed that she will be the Seventh Guardian of Light. With this, Kingdom Hearts' Dream Drop Distance comes to a close. Our villains are back in action, our heroes know what must be done, and a final battle is on the horizon. Kingdom Hearts Key was a browser-only PC game, released on July 18th, 2013. The game begins with a pop-up book opening to show Kairi and her grandmother in Radiant Garden, telling her famous story about the battle between light and darkness to set up our journey, as we are heading back in time before the Ancient Keyblade War began. Unlike the rest of the series, the player creates their own Keyblade wielder, and is asked to choose between five unions, Unicornus, Anguis, Leopardus, Vulpus, and Ursus. These are the unions led by the five foretellers, Ira, Envy, Gula, Ava, and Ased. They train to become Keyblade Masters under the Master of Masters, a man of whom little knowledge is known, except that he was able to see the future and he wrote the Book of Prophecies, a book which tells of future events. There was also a sixth apprentice named Lushu, however, he disappeared before the Master of Masters did. The player finds themselves in Daybreak Town, 
where they join other Keyblade wielders. The player is given a Kirithi, which is a small cat-like dream eater that acts as the player's guide. Kirithi explains that the player's goal is to collect Lux, a form of light gained from defeating Heartless from throughout various worlds in the hopes of preventing catastrophe. See, the Master of Masters gave each of the foretellers one of the Books of Prophecies. And on the last page of the Book of Prophecies was written, The Faded Land will be the battleground for a great war. Light will see defeat and expire, while darkness prevails evermore. Thus, the foretellers began collecting Lux with each of their unions in order to prevent the war. Soon, the player meets Ephemer, a Keyblade wielder who is suspicious of the foretellers. He and the player sneak into the foreteller's base of operations, however, in the process, Ephemer goes missing, and does not return. Eventually, the player meets another Keyblade wielder, named Skuld. The two see Master Envy and Master Asad fighting, and encounter Humanoid Heartless, accompanied by a nightmare version of Kirithi, who explains that these Heartless were once Keyblade wielders who succumbed to the power of darkness. Clearly, some shenanigans are going on here, so the player and Skuld head back to the Foreteller's base of operations to find some answers. Skuld and the player end up finding Master Ava. Ava is looking for Keyblade wielders to move to another realm in order to avoid the Keyblade War and restore light to the world once it's all over, and this group would be known as the Dandelions. This is the task Ava was given by the Master of Masters before his disappearance. She already enlisted Ephemer, hence his disappearance, and wants the player and Skuld to join as well. The player and Skuld begin to see Keyblade wielders fighting each other, and even see foretellers preparing to battle, with a said gathering forces of his own, and Ira asking Skuld and the player to help look for a solution to all this. They find Master Gula, who was given a lost page of the Book of Prophecies by the Master of Masters before he disappeared, with the knowledge that one of the foretellers was a traitor, and it was his job to figure out who it was. Gula informs Skuld and the player that the Master of Masters is the only one who can prevent the war, thus the war is inevitable. Meanwhile, Ava manages to find Lushu watching over Daybreak Town. As it turns out, this is the task the Master gave to Lushu, to watch the world burn and ensure the future plays out as stated in the book. He was also given a large black box to take into the future, the contents of which are unknown. Lushu summons his Keyblade, shockingly revealing the Keyblade that would eventually belong to Master Xehanort. Originally owned by the Master of Masters, he put his eye in the Keyblade and passed it on to Lushu, so that he may see the future from the Keyblade. This is how the Master of Masters was able to see the future and write the Book of Prophecies. After Lushu summons the Keyblade, a bell tolls, signaling the start of the Keyblade War. Fast forward a few days, and we are now on the Great Battlefield, with the Keyblade War in full force. After a grueling battle between the Foretellers and all the wielders from the Five Unions, the player collapses as hearts of deceased Keyblade wielders float into the sky. As the player lies on the ground, seemingly in the last moments of life, Skuld and Ephemer appear in a brilliant light. Ephemer asks the player to go with them, taking the player's hand. Soon later, the player wakes up in Enchanted Dominion. Kirithi says that the Keyblade War was just a dream. Close by, Maleficent appears, joyously declaring that she should be safe in this world, and that Sora cannot interfere with her plans here. The plot of the browser version ends here, however the story does continue in Unchained Key and Union Cross. However, those games still have an ongoing story that will be continuing throughout KH3, so the details in those games aren't as important as the details in the browser version and back cover, because the story in those games are already completed. Unchained Key and Union Cross still covered pretty much everything up to the Maleficent part from the browser version, so at the very least, you'll be fine going into KH3 knowing everything that we covered here.
Now we head into Kingdom Hearts 0.2, a fragmentary passage, a game that is part of the collection known as Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue. Kingdom Hearts 0.2 starts with a conversation between Yin Sid, King Mickey, Riku, and Kairi. Yin Sid tells the group that it's time to get back the three Keyblade wielders we lost over 10 years ago, these people being Terra, Ventus, and Aqua. He then proceeds to tell the group Aqua's current situation of being trapped in the realm of darkness, and the game begins as if told through Mickey's perspective since he had once met her during his time in the realm of darkness. Having walked through the dark realm for an uncertain amount of time, Aqua stumbles across a world she had once been to when she was in the realm of light, the Castle of Dreams. As Aqua makes her way through the town, she is reminded of her previous experiences, which seems to do nothing but to wear her down and make her feel more vulnerable to the darkness in which she is trapped in. After battling a Tower of Heartless, she unexpectedly runs into Terra, or so she thought. It seems that the world keeps people's memories alive, so it resulted in the illusion of Terra. She asked herself what became of the people of the world that fell to darkness, but quickly realized that they hadn't been trapped like she is and that she will take whatever solace she can knowing this, trying her best to find as much light in the darkness as she can. Later, she comes across another illusion, this time it being Ventus. It quickly goes away and a mirror appears before Aqua, pulling her inside of it. She had again come across another world that she had been to before that has fallen to darkness, this being the Dwarf Woodlands. Afterwards, Aqua is now in a place seemingly comprised of a bunch of mirrors. As she is trying to figure out a way out of this fallen world, she comes across a mirror that ends up producing a phantom version of her. She ends up fighting it multiple times and emerges victorious each time. Though with each victory, it is bittersweet as she is starting to realize the darkness is starting to get to her. Aqua ends up getting out of the fallen dwarf woodlands and finds her way into Enchanted Dominion, yet another world she had been to. As soon as she enters, she sees phantoms of Ventus and Terra and begins to run after them, claiming that she doesn't care if they're visions, she misses them and wants to be together with them again. Later in the world, Aqua meets up with the illusions of Terra and Ventus, except this time, Terra responds to her, although he is confused on the current situation. Terra goes to explain that he had heard Aqua in the darkness and responded to her, which is why they are able to speak. He tells Aqua that Xehanort is trying to locate Ventus, in which she replied he won't ever find him because she hit him well, and at that moment, Terra is taken over by Xehanort. Xehanort asks if the place she hit him was the Chamber of Waking, which she replied yes, but quickly cut herself off. Then Terra and Xehanort proceed to have a struggle over Terra's body, with Terra having enough of Xehanort and pulling back control. Aqua and Ven are grabbed by a dark side, and she ends up passing out. Once awake, Mickey finds her drifting in the darkness, but soon after, a battle with shadows commences. After they drive it away, Aqua, in a very defeated voice, asks if Mickey had seen Ventus and Terra, in which she replies no. Mickey reveals that he and Yin Sid had been looking for Aqua the entire time she was away, and Aqua tells Mickey about how she had ended up in the realm of darkness in the first place. After they catch up, Mickey explains to Aqua why he is in the realm of darkness, which is to lock the door to darkness so he can protect the other worlds, but in order to do so, he needs to find the Dark Realm's Keyblade. Aqua and Mickey then find their way to a fallen Destiny Islands. The two talk about Sora and Riku, and Mickey tells Aqua that those are the ones who have been helping Mickey to try and restore the worlds and lock the door. The conversation, however, is cut short when a gigantic horde of shadows approaches them. After it's defeated, Mickey and Aqua head into the secret place and end up opening the door that was in it. The door reveals to have behind it the Dark Realm's Keyblade, otherwise known as the Kingdom Key D. Once obtained, Mickey and Aqua spot Riku, but not before another horde of shadows goes to attack Riku as he is running by. Aqua quickly runs towards Riku and protects him from the shadows and tells Mickey to go on without her. Unfortunately, she is pushed back into the door, while Mickey goes with his newly acquired Keyblade and goes to seal the door to darkness, showing that these events are the events that led up to the ending of Kingdom Hearts 1. Once the door to darkness is sealed and the worlds are returning back to normal, Aqua is laying on the beach of Destiny Islands and realizes that the worlds are being returned to the Realm of Light and that Mickey and the others completed their mission. As Destiny Islands is being restored, Aqua is falling back into darkness and says, may our hearts be our guiding key and that we will know where she is. Mickey's story concludes with him saying he had thought he had heard her voice in the distance. An angered Riku asks Mickey why he kept it from him for so long, in which Mickey says he wanted to respect her choice. Yin Sid also says he forbade Mickey from saying anything in order to stop Riku and even Sora from staging a reckless attempt at rescue for Aqua. Mickey then reassures Riku that the current plan now is to go and save her. Yin Sid gives Riku and Mickey some new clothes and they part ways. Later, Sora is seen running up the stairs and has returned from whatever it is he was doing at the end of Dream Drop Distance. Sora, Donald, and Goofy are then told by Yin Sid that even though Sora had lost a bit of his powers from the events that had transpired in Dream Drop Distance, Sora is still the key to saving their lost friends. 
He tells Sora he needs to perfect one power, and that would be the power of waking, which he had learned from his Mark of Mastery exam and that he should visit a certain hero who had lost all of his powers but found it again. A true hero we all should have an idea of. The three reply to count on them and make their way to the gummy ship. Inside of the gummy ship, they realize that the old pathways to the worlds they had been to are closed and are trying to figure out a way to get to their destination. Goofy then says the quote, May your heart be your guiding key. Sora begins to think on it a bit, then suddenly realizing the answer he had been looking for. He summons his Keyblade and creates a pathway to the world they need to go to, Olympus Colosseum, which then starts the events of Kingdom Hearts 3. Ah, <sighs> what a video. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful, especially to those whose first Kingdom Hearts game is going to be Kingdom Hearts 3 and wanted to get the story of all the games beforehand, but didn't have the time to play all the games. I also want to thank my dear friends who also were a huge hand in helping me make this video from the bottom of my heart. This is definitely my biggest video yet and is a send off I really wanted to do before Kingdom Hearts 3 released. This is going to be a huge turning point in all of our lives so I and my friends hope that you guys are ready for what's coming. If by any means you enjoyed the video at all and it helped you in any way, leave a like on it and a comment down below on what you thought. And of course, check out all of my friends. All of their social medias are linked in the description below. Show them some love because they 100% deserve it. If by chance you have someone that wants to get into the series and wants the story as quickly as possible, share it around so everyone can benefit. It's been Limit and of course all of my amazing friends and we hope to see you guys very soon. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.